Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, I wanted to do a quick video today. I've gotten a few questions about tools uh, for CNC. Um, in previous videos, I have mainly been using tools from the Fusion library. Um, I just got in a new bit yesterday. Uh, this was a, um, a carving bit. Uh, it does have a... Uh, you know, a tip, and this type of bit is not in the library. So you can use this method uh, to add your own custom tools uh, into the Fusion uh, local library. So uh, let's let's uh, get started. So you don't have to have a drawing going or a sketch or a model. Um, we're going to switch into the CAM workspace. Uh, we're going to go to Manage and Tool Library. Uh, and if I look here, normally I would select uh, milling, uh, engraving, or chamfer bit. And you can see here for a lot of these tools, um, some of them have a tip diameter. Uh, some of these don't. Uh, for example, here, uh, tip diameter is zero. So if you try to use a tip diameter of zero, uh, Fusion will actually not let you uh, create a toolpath because it needs some sort of tip diameter uh, for carving. Uh, these work for engraving, uh, but for carving you do have to have some sort of um, tip diameter. So uh, you can see here, here's a couple tools I've added. Um, this was a uh, 45 degree, total of 90 degree uh, engraving bit that I have. It turns out there is actually one in the library. I didn't know at the time. And then this one uh, was one that I created. This is actually one of the bits that came with the uh, CNC machine that I bought. But if we wanted to add a tool, uh, we're here in the library. We, we start off by new tool. Okay, uh, this is a milling type tool. And it's a, uh, you, could, you could either start with a, a tapered or engrave slash chamfer mill. We're actually gonna go with an, an engrave one here. Uh, description, I'm going to call this um, a V carve bit vendor. Let me see, this was rowdy bits. I'm going to put this on the other screen so I can look at both of them. Uh, product ID, I go ahead and put a, a link here. If you guys are interested, I'll put a link to this uh, in the description uh, because this, this is good for uh, some intricate car carving uh, because it does have a rounded tip. So that's a 1 32nd inch uh, in diameter, 1 64th inch radius. Uh, so for some very detailed cuts, this is what you would uh, want to use. And it wasn't that expensive. Uh, if you have a smaller machine like I do, this two and a half inch total length uh, does work pretty well. I've tried with three inch uh, bits. They're just a little too long for my small machine. Okay, so now we've got some general information. Um, Fusion does a pretty good job of, of walking you through this. Uh, it, when you click on a dimension here, uh, it does show you uh, which dimension specifically uh, that it's referring to. Uh, some of these are going to be the same. So uh, this is a 0.25 inch bit. 0.25, same thing with the shaft. Uh, and you'll see the actual bit kind of start to take shape here. Um, tip diameter. Uh, so this is 132. You can put the um, fraction in there and it will uh, spit it out for you. Overall length, and it's say 2.5. Uh, length below holder um, will say 1.5. I'm not really sure. Actually, I'm going to say 1.75. Uh, shoulder length, so the actual uh, length of the um, the cutting bit. So that's for here. That's that's one inch. One inch. Uh, flute length is also one inch. 
a taper angle. Let's see, what does it say on here? Taper angle, it's a pretty steep one. It doesn't say it directly in the description. So I'm looking for Perhaps it's in one of these here. Um, I'm probably just going to put 10 or 20 degrees. Um, yeah, it's not it's not being very specific here. So, yeah, let's just use uh, use 10 degrees here. And you'll notice um, the degree here. So a lower degree means a steeper angle. A wider degree, so 45 uh, inclusive angle, uh, refers to the total angle between the two sides. Um, let's put in uh, 20. Let's see what 10 looks like. Yeah, actually, I think I think it's 10. That looks that looks closer to what this bit looks like. Um, I forgot to go back up here. Uh, this does say it's solid carbide. Some of these things don't matter as much uh, since I'm just doing wood. Uh, this is two flutes. It is important to put the number of flutes. And in case, um, in case no one's explained what a flute is, so you see how there's two cutting edges. Uh, so this is a two flute system, or sorry, a two fluted bit, uh, which means that one rotation will cut the material twice. So that's important uh, for fusion because it will calculate a recommended uh, rotational speed and feed rate based on uh, things like the, the number of flutes, etc. Uh, this looks good. Uh, yep, it's normal clockwise. Um, if, if you're getting into more advanced stuff and, and you have the, the name of the, um, uh, the holder, <laughs> uh, you can put that in um, spindle speed. I'm going to Ten thousand surface speed, cutting feed rate. I'm just gonna leave that because I, I typically uh, change those based on uh, what I'm doing. Um, so after we're done here, we just hit accept, and we can close this. And let's say if um, I open a previous tutorial project, let's say, let's see here. Uh, maybe this is a good one. It's a, it's a little heart ring holder I was making. Um, whoops. Uh, so so next time I go to, let's say, add, a, I guess it would be a 2D um, engraving operation. And when I go to library, um, there it is. This is called my V-carve bit. Um, you do want to give this a unique name. Uh, here's here's uh, the ones I've previously done. Um, you can double click or you can hit select and then uh, see 10,000 RPMs, uh, feed rate, uh, all these things are pre-populated. So that's how you add a custom tool into Fusion 360. Thanks for watching.